It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFRocks.com. Everybody out there, this is Free Ride, and I'm here with my friend, uh, Mr. Guido. Guido, who, how you doing? Who said I was your friend? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, is people telling you? Were, yeah. were, were people talking about me behind my back? Yeah. <laughs> you fucking douchebag. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm a big douchebag, and you know what? I, I love it when people call in the show and try to be douchebags, too, and, and then I... Rip them a new asshole. Yeah, they they don't have the balls, man. No, people are afraid You're to scared. match my banter. I remember we had this one person on, and they were totally like not good. And I made some joke, and the person got mad. Oh yeah, remember that? I remember that. I'm not gonna say names because we don't want to pick on people, but I, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was quite confused, you know. Yeah, I was. I was. So we were trying to make things light and funny, and it was like, it wasn't happening. No. So you're from Missouri, right? Yeah, I am from Missouri. Why the fuck is all this bad shit always happening in Missouri? Well, what bad shit are you talking about? Now they're buying 150 cell phones and shit. Okay, okay. The, the, here's what that is. Okay, the guy said he bought it for Christmas presents. <laughs> Uh, but the guy is Arabic. <laughs> he's from the Middle East. <laughs> so he bought 150. Chances are he's not Christmas buying those for Christmas. And right. also there are 250 some odd uh, 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 bottles propane. of uh, propane missing. Right. Yeah, That's what is that for? Is there a big barbecue they're having too? Yeah, I'm thinking, well, they're not doing pork. That's for damn sure. No, I think well. they're ready to cook up some human beings. They're going to go after the Gateway Arch. You think but, so? Yeah, but they're picking the wrong time to do that. If they're going to hit the Arch, man, they're still working on the park. So it's not really, you know, I'm I'm guessing they're going to go after like a sporting event or something like that. I mean, there's so many better places they can go after, like, you know, the, the slums or whatever. You know, just stop with, you know. Right. Uh, how would people feel if we went and, and if people just went to their country and blew up their things, that you know, you don't like that. Leave our shit alone. Yeah. Well. You know. I mean, I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what they want. They want to go toe to toe with us. Well, they nobody wants to, wants to go. I remember the time back when, before. Do you remember the, when it was okay to be politically incorrect? When we weren't a bunch of pussy pansies that had to watch what we said, and you know, oh, you can't say that. That's the you know what? I miss fucking Ronald Reagan. Well, yeah. Well, we all miss Ronnie. I, mean, I, I miss I, I the think... times where the president get on the air and say, oh, air traffic controllers, oh, you, you want to go on strike? Go ahead. But you have no job tomorrow. Yeah. Fire them all. Fire every goddamn one of them. Balls. 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 You know, we don't have balls anymore. No, there are no balls. You know, I, we used to have presidents who say, well, if you don't want to get shot by the cops, don't break the fucking law. Right. Now, I believe in equal rights and for women and for gays and all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. That's fine. I'm glad the world came up in the 21st century on stuff like that. Right. But we're, we have, why did we have to lose our backbone and, and, and our ability to just say what the fuck you want? Why, did, why does that have to go away? Why can't I be pre- well, we can. We can I'm say whatever ask, the fuck we want right me. now. You, no, you I'm can... just saying. But if I, you know, back in the day when you would say to your buddies, oh, you fag or you homo, it was fine. But now you say that to somebody, it's a hate crime. Well, it's not a hate I crime. I didn't really mean that he was gay. No. You know, it could be I mean, it's a hate well, crime. It is. We used to laugh out loud about fucking just 
just you know calling each other fag and you know uh, you know somebody right it was it somebody was somebody steal like, a cigarette bad. from you and say well you get out of my cigarette you fag <laughs> tell the matter with right. you yeah no I but remember it, now I remember it's, the day. it's 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 not right to say that now you know and it's also not right to have some balls you can't you know. Ronald Reagan would be like, "What? You gonna bomb us? No, not 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 today, buddy. We're gonna take care of you first. People were afraid to fuck with us. Well, yeah. Now everybody fucks with us. Yeah, well, it's because we got a coward in the White House. Yeah. You know, and, every, and, and, but it's they, not just him. I agree with you on that, but it's not just him. It's no, it's the whole administration. They gathered all of these sheeple together. There's a there's a method to their madness. And um, but uh, you know we're we're going off on, on on politics, and I don't and I don't want to discuss politics. I really don't. I you know things are so screwed up right now that that if you know if I go on a tangent, I could go on for two well, hours. I'm not talking talk about, about politics, and and I, I I'm not even talking about the political side of it. I'm talking about us as Americans. When did we become a bunch of pussies? Okay, a long time ago. You know, and back in the day, in the '60s and shit, there'd be fucking lynch mobs out there getting these ISIS pricks already. Well, see, that's the thing, though. We've been fighting. These guys are actually everybody calls them terrorists now. Okay, Guido, and that's the politically correct word to use. Is they are terrorists, but they're actually barbarians, is what they are. Right. And back I in don't the day, think it's politically correct when you talk about assholes. You could call them whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, and I don't think they're terrorists. I think they're barbarians. I and and uh, uh, they're animals. And um, uh, and calling them what they are is exactly right. Okay. And now they they said, okay, now we're an army. Now we're an army. Now you know. Okay. Now you're you're bound by the rules of the Geneva, uh, Geneva Convention. Okay, and so once you do that, once you say I declare war on a country, they are bound by those rules. Okay, so when they don't follow those rules, then they're going to be tried for war crimes. Okay, Mm. but this is a never ending thing. This is who we are. This is the animal that comes out of human beings. Mm. And and it's one of those things where it'll never end. Not in my lifetime, not in your lifetime, not even in our kids' lifetime. One can hope for peace and harmony and people living together, uh, dogs and cats sleeping together. And, and, but that, that's not real. That's not real. Let's tell it how it is. You're right. Let's tell it the way it is. Right. We're all a bunch of fucking assholes. Not just, mm-hmm. not just the Arabs, not just the, the, the radical Muslims. Not just the radical Christians, we're all a bunch of fucking assholes, and we all have that that capability of doing what these people do. But that being, it's like because you never know, man. I mean, some of these guys that that do these these mass murders and do all this stuff, um, there's no rhyme or reason for it. Everybody, oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he was but, a good but, boy. But, but that's 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 true too. But the other thing that pisses me off about this country, about what's going on, is back in the day, we opened our doors, and we still do. We open our doors to anybody. You want to be an American citizen? Come be an American citizen. But right. you need to love this country. That was part of it. You took that oath. You had to love this country. You had to respect this country. And you had to learn the language. And you had to learn the language. Yeah. It's not that way anymore. Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt set those rules. Yes, and Teddy Roosevelt was a smart man, and and that right there makes more sense than anything in the world. You can come to this country, but the doors are open to you, but you become part of this country, and you better fucking love it or get the fuck out. Yeah, well, I you know, know, but we've gone past that. We are the new Europe, and you mm-hmm. see where Europe is going. That We're going in the same direction as Europe is. It's unfortunate, but it is. Now, I can tell you what I may foresee. I may, you know how the Soviet Union crumbled, right? right. And it was a bloodless coup, and and the the union fell apart because of money. We are headed mm-hmm. in the same direction. This union, if it doesn't get squared away soon, is headed in the same direction. And now, what we'll have is when you come here to visit me in Missouri. You're going to have to have a passport. <laughs> to go state to state? State to state or region to region. 
This country can be divided into five or six different countries. There's California, there's New, there's, uh, there's Texas, there's the right. Northeast. All of these areas will be cordoned off into different countries, man. And I can see it coming. We'd have a socialist state over here. We'll have a free democracy over here. We'll have a communist state here, right there in our next door neighbor, yeah. because nobody gives a fuck anymore. Well, what, what you should do is uh, stop um, labeling things. Socialism, Democratic, Republican. No, none of it works. Donald Trump may not be the best candidate, but he's got he's got the plan. He's a businessman. We need to run this fucking country like a business. That's and the only that I, way it should be run. Right. Is right. I'm not saying I endorse him or anything. But KDF but, uh, Rocks does not endorse Donald Trump right. or any right. other candidate. I, I don't endorse anybody publicly. You know, my my it's my business. It's my business. Mm-hmm. But. What I'm saying is, is the things he's saying is not so bad. Maybe he's not the right person, but maybe they should listen to him a little bit because we need this. We need to bring uh, economic. I'm just so back. tired. You're right. I, I'm just so tired of every four years they have this election cycle and all these brilliant ideas come out of these guys, but none of them get implemented. Right. All these run this wonderful. Oh, America could be better. The shining light on the hill. Read my lips, no new taxes, blah, 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 blah. And all of those have failed, including Obamacare. Mm-hmm. It's a disaster. It's yes. costing me, a, and I don't even have kids, it's costing me more than it should. And I, I just, I just, dude, I, I think we could do better. No, I think oh, we can always do better. better. We just got to get our, uh, our head of, out of our ass. But I don't want to talk about that no more. Okay. Yes. I want to talk about something else. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. You want to talk but, about something else, but you don't know what? Yeah. Well, let's tell everybody that uh, Mary Jane uh, won't be on tonight to do the no. weather. She's, She's not, not feeling, feeling well. well. She's got a cough. She's got, she's got a cough. Poor baby. So so are you going to do the weather for us? Uh, sure. Okay. I'll do the weather and name the city. Right. What city will we have tonight, uh, Guido? Today, we're going to be talking about the weather in uh, Big Bone Lick, Kentucky. Big Bone Lick, Kentucky. That's right. Mm. Big Bone Lick, Kentucky. Right now in Big Bone Lick, You can Lick, imagine Kentucky. what's going on in that town. It's 62 degrees. Uh, tonight, it's cloudy with a chance of showers. Lows around 57. Uh, south south to southwest wind 9 to 15 miles per hour gusting up to 23 miles per hour in parts of the city chance of precipitation is 100 percent new precipitation amounts up to one quarter inch possible in bowling Lake, kentucky and it looks like for the rest of the week they'll be fine on uh, tuesday 55 wednesday 59 thursday 48 friday 41 saturday 39 and sunday a sunny 43 Typical winter December weather for Kentucky. Kentucky. Well, is it typical? Is it lick. Is it that, typical December weather to be seventy degrees in Buffalo, New York? No, that's not typical. On December thirteenth, and seventy-two here yesterday. It's kind of scares the crap out of me because we haven't had any snow yet, and that's the first time ever I think that we in 115 years that we haven't had snow at this point yet. What the fuck is coming? <laughs> I mean, is the sky just going to open up one day? Oh, shit, we forgot to do this all season, so let's just do it one time now. I mean, it happens here. We got yeah. we get 24 inches, 36 inches in a night sometimes, you know. And, yeah, just heavy snow. You uh, can hear it pitter-patting on the roof, right? Well, I'll tell you what, you could it's walk. It's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, you can walk to my house. In, in, in to the lake here. That's how close the lake is to me. The lake is warm as fuck right now. Okay? No That's what creates storms, people. Not the ice on the lake. When the, the lake is frozen, it, no slows the, it slows them storms down to nothing. But it's not frozen. There's motherfuckers out on their boat still right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is scary. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a scary thing, man. It can really All is, you, you know, need like, is one big cold front to slide down over yeah. that lake when the water's warm. 
yep. and you are going to get clobbered. I can see, <laughs> like last year. I mean, last year that big storm last year that was that was a mess. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember that one. Yeah, I don't forget those easily. So we put up our Christmas tree this weekend. Are you ready to go for Christmas? Yeah, I'm all good. We, 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 we decorated, it's all decorated, and um, it's good. I actually went on an expedition for a tree this year. First time ever, we cut our own tree down, and uh, it was nice. It was a good time, and it, it really wasn't a big, you know, stump on the tree or whatever you want to call it. But man, it fucking took me forever to cut that shit down. Took you for a while, huh? Yeah, it, you were all out of breath and so, shit. Take that. Yeah, Hold on a minute. Let me smoke another cigarette. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And then my daughters were watching. So I had to, like, you know, be like nothing, you know? Yeah, you had to be the tough guy. You yeah. Had to play. I, I got out the plastic tree that I have. Uh, Connie did, anyway. I didn't do it. And uh, she got some new uh, uh, purple garland with some purple bulbs, I guess. And the tree went up in about three minutes. <laughs> so, you know, nothing special there. And uh, she, she did do one thing, though, different this year than we did last year. There's a couple of bells hanging from our doorknob on the front door. So oh, cool. that, that's kind of special. You know, ding, 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 ding. The cat's going to hit at it and shit. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's going to be on the street. Cars will be running over it. You know, right. that kind of right. thing. So. That's Christmas to me, man. That's Christmas to me. I'm not even ready, man. I am not no. even freaking ready. No. no Why not? I have pro- because I procrastinate, man. I, like I said, I just, I hate the fucking holiday. I got I got to be honest with you. I hate the fucking holiday. Well, that's, really no, so, that's no secret here at KGF that no. uh, Free hates the holiday. No, Matter of I, fact. I hate the precursor to the freaking holiday. Matter of fact, he uh, hates Christmas music. I, I, I despise Christmas music. I will listen to Christmas music. Mm-hmm. I will listen to Christmas music. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. They turn that shit on. They turn that shit on in Thanksgiving. That's Thanks- a tradition, man. That doesn't just happen. Thanks- That's been happening like that. You see Santa Claus on the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And, and it that starts the ushers Christmas in season. the Christmas season. Now I'm forty oh, yeah. some years old, and that's been happening since I was a child. You're not that much older than me, so it didn't just happen, man. It's been like that for ages. Tell me it hasn't. Well, the tradition was you saw you, you had Thanksgiving, you saw Santa Claus on the eat. Oh, Santa Claus! There were some people that already had the decorations ready to go. Hey, it was great when I was a kid, but that's kid stuff. It's all a fairy tale. Who gets excited about a fucking fairy tale anymore? I mean, come on, seriously, Santa Claus? Seriously, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Uh, My kids still on. do. You know, I, you know, t- Santa Claus is. I mean, I picture Santa Claus as this guy carrying a meat cleaver. You know, here, have some candy. Whack, whack, whack. You know, as it, it is, um, it was a made up story to keep mm-hmm. people interested in a, a religion that they didn't believe in. <laughs> <laughs> they said, oh, is that what happens on Christmas? I mean, these kids, they grow up in a fantasy land. There's fucking Easter Bunny, there's fucking Santa Claus. There's, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, and then they find out that these guys are fake, right. and then they say, "Wait a minute, let me finish." Let, let me, then let they me. Say, then they look at Uncle Sam, then they look at Uncle Sam and say, "Oh, there's another fake, wow. there's another bullshit." I, you know, you, I have, have no kids a, to take that watched, shit uh, with them all the way to the bank, man. Have you ever watched a porn movie? Have I ever watched a porn movie? Of course, I have watched a porn movie. I'm not dead. Well, then you live in fantasy land too, because you ain't getting that. No, I ain't getting that, but right. I don't so watch your ones. It's a fantasy. It's a I fantasy. See, when it comes to porn, though, I'm not watching the ones where I know I can't get that. I watch the ones where I know I got at least a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantasy. Fantasy. It is. Okay. It's and all a fantasy. It, it, it's not a fantasy to trick kids. It's not a fantasy to to make them good or whatever. It's something that 
makes them lose their, my not, kids. their innocence. Now that society doesn't believe in these things more like they used to, the kids aren't as good as they used to be. The kids don't have as much respect and manners as they used to have when we were kids, okay? Because we are losing these old core values. We're losing them. They're all going. I mean, nowadays, kids are believing in Santa or stop believing in Santa at an earlier age every year as time goes by. Well, my okay. kids my, my kids knew there was no Santa. I was Santa Claus when they were eight. Right. Well, my, my, my kids. The one found out even sooner. Uh, Scotty found out real soon. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that, you know, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you know, I, I'm. But my brother's kids, my brother's kids, thought there was a Santa Claus when they were like twelve or fourteen, and that scared the shit out of me. Come on, seriously, right. you're going to continue to lie to your kids? Why? If what they believe, that, why not? What's the trust? They're children. They're not children. Not at twelve or fourteen. Well, Emails some can some, conceive at fourteen, for Christ's sake. Do you think that kid really believed in Santa still, or he was just saying, "I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna pretend like I do, so I can get the fucking." Oh, they Xbox believed in there. Santa Claus all the way, the Easter fucking bunny, and every fucking thing else. You know, if you want to believe in something, believe that Christ the Savior was born on Christmas Day. And Christ but was wasn't he? even December twenty fifth. How do you know he was? How do you know he even exists? That's a fantasy. I know Jesus Christ exists because there's history about him. Okay, there's, there's history about it. There's documentation to prove that he was on this earth. That doesn't mean he was the son of God. Right. But I'm not going to argue that fact because I don't really know. And not only that, there's always nice to have that ace in the hole. Okay? Right. Does that make sense? I mean, you always got that ace in the hole say, well, I believed in him. Okay, and I believe that he existed. But... At the same fucking time, I, I you know, I, I followed his his teaching. I don't kill, I don't rape, I don't, I, I, I try my damnedest not to lie, and and uh, I don't commit adultery, you know. And those are the four mains I own. I respected my parents when I grew up, mm-hmm. you know. It, it's just one of those things. I mean, I followed the teachings of Christ and God. Okay, what well, what is expected behavior from mm-hmm. us? Uh, but at the same time, man, I, at the same time, I sinned too. And I got room to be forgiven. But I don't worry about that stuff. The thing that I worry about most, the thing that I worry about most is my kids. Right. I don't worry about myself. I worry about my kids worry about. and my family. Okay? So uh, that being said, I think, I think that, uh, that Christmas is, when it's in its place, it's a good thing. And when it's taken out of the boundaries... That irritates me. That it gets on my last nerve. The traffic, the impatience, the anger on people. So you're supposed to be cheerful. You come into my store and you buy auto parts from me. And the reason you're pissed off is because you got to pay 129 or 150 bucks on that starter, and that kid's not going to get that fucking video game for Christmas. Right. Okay. That's why you're pissed off. Or instead of ham, now I got to get a fucking turkey. You know. Right. Those are the things. Those are the things. That's why Christmas being celebrated too soon is wrong. I don't think so. I think you're wrong on that. I think you're just a Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> you may have a point there. I may you know? be a Grinch. <laughs> I may be a Grinch. You know, I, I just, I just don't think that it's necessary to go all that time. I mean. Like I said, I, I buy my gifts. I get buy gifts all year round for my wife, mm-hmm. and we don't buy for each other on Christmas. There's nothing under the tree for me this year, and there'll be nothing under the tree for her this year. Just the grandkids. Well, that's different because it, it because that's the way you can't afford to do all that. That's fine. You, that's the two things you do. You know, a lot of times we do the same thing, or we'll buy our own gifts, whatever. But. It, what I'm saying to you, it's not about what you buy for people, or whatever. It should be about what you do for each other in a compa- you know companion way in a, in a, a companionship and you and, know whatever and, and you know compassion and caring and oh dad I need a new tire man and I ain't got it okay I got it okay I got you covered dad I need this or or you know but they don't come to me for that you know so it's one of those things you know I mean I did my part but that being said we can drop this subject. This is two weeks yeah, in a row we talked about fucking Christmas, man. Well, it's Christmas. What else are you yeah. supposed to talk about? Well, you're supposed to. Yeah, and, and, and we talked about politics tonight. We broke two golden rules, man. Yeah, I don't care. Frank Sinatra would have been 100 
years old yesterday. Frank Sinatra was an icon for many, 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 many. many. People think he was a flash in the pan. This guy was around. What? Flash in the pan? This Hell. guy here, if you don't know who Frank Sinatra is, and I had the privilege of seeing Frank Sinatra live at the Fox Theater here in St. Louis uh, on his second run after he supposedly retired. Even they did it back then. Right. And um, he always put on a great show. He always played. He was a showman. And I think, I think that uh, uh, he's been missed, but... You know, he'd have been a hundred years old. I don't think he's going to go that long. He and he he when he passed away, he uh, uh, took with him his legacy, and uh, uh, he was he was he was an artist, and and he was a great guy, man. He was he was uh, really up on the uh, the race relations, and he was mm-hmm. in with Martin Luther King, and uh, he tried to get things done uh, to help with race relations in this country. And I think he did. You know, he was one of those things. He was a, he was a fine example of an American. He really was. Uh, he had a lot of connections with the mob, but that's okay, man. They protected him. Right. Yeah, that's true. They did, and and uh, um, they all worked for each other. Like, you know, and, and you know, they 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 helped each other. You know, say he was with Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, all those people. They all worked off of each other. Right. But, you know, so it, 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 it's uh, he, he was very. Very, very talented too. People don't realize it, and uh, he did movies. He did everything. You know, he was uh, pretty good. Yeah, he did real good. Yeah, and um, he he just he's the chairman of the board, dude. He fucking owned. He even had a successful record label, Reprise Records, where he had found Jimi Hendrix, and you know he had a lot of people on his record label. Oh yeah, and, and on his TV you know, show. Him mm-hmm. and Elvis Presley, your favorite, did a duet. Right. You believe that? Yeah, I do yeah. believe that. He was and, awesome. And, and uh, you know, he was, he was the master, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, as far as, as far as Frank Sinatra is concerned, I think he was a, uh, he was a great guy, and I think that uh, he deserves to, uh, uh, to go into the KGF Rocks Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, I, I think he does. I, I'll have no arguments there. Yeah. You know, oh, he hated rock and roll, though, man. But he he went with the tide. He yep. went with the tide. You know, he flowed with things. And um, he, like I said, he brought it. He, he took a lot. It took a lot of nerve for him to do that. To take uh, uh, Elvis Presley on and the Beatles and all them guys. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of balls. And he also, when he started his record company, he started his record company with guys that were being faded out by the big record companies. Right. Right. Well, he and, was on uh, a record, big record. He was on Capitol, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think he was, uh, he was something else, man. He, he was pretty cool. Hey, you know and what we should do? We should do a Frank Sinatra song. Yeah. Play a Frank Sinatra song, text our, our guest and which is a scheduled different changed guests. Oh uh, yeah. We had to change guests tonight. We thought we were going to have DJ Tats tonight. Um, but, uh, we didn't. Uh, he he failed to show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a show uh, and we're going to invite our friend Hooligan in from, from Hooligan Radio. And uh, if you'll just give us a, just a few minutes, uh, we will put one together here for you as soon as I can. And I'll drop that in. And we'll be back here shortly with our guest tonight. I guess we'll be Hooligan tonight. So stay tuned. You're listening to Conjugal Visits through kgfrocks.com here's one of my old favorite standards from the chairman of the board and and that's Mr. Frank Sinatra who would have been 100 years old today born in 1915 or yesterday rather yesterday yeah they did a real special thing on HBO they did his documentary Mm -hmm. uh, and I was watching it and I said wow that's fascinating man He's married to some pretty women, man. I tell you what. My yeah. God, yeah, he was married oh, to yeah. Ava Gardner. Oh, fuck. what a fox, man! I mean, I it gotta was tell you, Frank fucking Sinatra, dude. Frank dude. fucking Sinatra. <laughs> well, what Speaking we of <laughs> fucking, we got hooligan on. Yeah, we got. <laughs> hey, hooligan, how you doing, man? Ah, uh, pretty good, guys. How about yourselves? Oh, we're <laughs> doing okay. We're hanging in there. We're on the conjugal visit. With uh, my friend uh, Hooligan, and, uh, and, and, and tell me, uh, Hooligan, 
Uh, how's the station going, man? Well, it, it's been going pretty damn good, but, so, you know, everything's up in limbo right now with all these new rules and waiting to find out how much licensing is going to cost. But, I mean, I've been enjoying it. Uh, all my DJs have been enjoying it. They love it. So, right. yeah. you guys are going through the same thing. So You know, you know is, what I hate about most about it is the piece about where they told us, don't rock the boat. Fucking! What do you mean? Don't fucking rock the boat. This, this is this is our thing, dude. Yeah, you know, this is what we do. Yeah, don't rock the boat. I want to be screaming from the mountaintops. Fuck you, you know. <laughs> I mean, I do. Yeah, I. I, I, I mean, I really do. You, well, and, and what they're doing? I mean, they're not okay. Everybody deserves money. We pay royalties. We pay these bands. Good for them. They deserve the money. I appreciate that. But the hikes are like four hundred percent. What the fuck is that? It's a terrible business model if you think about it. Because yeah. you're going to lose so many stations. So you're going to lose so much money. Whereas if you if you actually kept them the same or lowered them, you would have so many more stations coming along in the future. Right. And, and that's the thing, too. Would you rather have, uh, you know, X amount of cents for each artist because there's only a handful of them? Or do you want a lot of cents from a lot of different uh, facets for your artists? Yeah. Right. The more people I mean, that play the song, the more money you're going to fucking get. They got to be under the thumb of other conglomerates. Like the main Sirius XM and all these people have to be pushing some kind of button. I mean, it hasn't been said, but there's got to be something to that. Right. That they're, because they slowly feel the money going away from them. And, you know... A lot of these internet radio stations aren't taking a large chunk of money, but as more of them come up, some of that money is going to be going to them. Right. But these major companies, they have to have something to do with this, too. That's what I think, too. The iHearts and the Pandoras and the fucking Spotify's and all that shit. I mean, we do basically almost the same thing they do because you know why? We play music that the radio stations don't play. We, we were not afraid to fucking do it. And, but even and, a, even a station like iHeartRadio is losing money currently under the current system. Uh, They're I, not really making money. No, no. It, it, and the system was designed ten years ago. It was it was first implemented in like oh five when radio when internet radio started to really get big. They never expected uh, internet radio to be as big as it is. Okay, you know now there's people putting uh, cars coming out with with fucking internet access automatically with Wi Fi and and you know where you can get. Uh, tune in radio on your f- car now and listen yeah. to you know your station or our station they're making it simpler so now wait a minute they're doing all this we got to learn figure out a way to make more money off of this why why do you got to make more you're going to make less in the long run i think oh yeah for sure for sure I, I, no i i agree with that it's just it, it, how can they not i mean even the people that we license through are fearing that they're going to lose their their business, and not only will let let let's look at this guys. Not only will the licensing people lose their business, but so will all these other companies that are going off of internet radio, Centova, Streamy, uh, Live Web DJ. All these other entities are going to go out of business because of this. How do we let? How does that happen? The Amer- it's it's like what we were talking about before, the whole American thing. Right. Like America's just changed in general. Like honestly, I've been looking into this whole situation, and if I don't get a decision soon with what I'm going to do with this station, I'm going to take my server. I'm going to move ro- overseas. Right. Host my server from overseas. Right. So that I'm not under the regulations that are currently in place here. Right. It, it, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be like a pirated radio again and and that's the thing that's going to suck because you're right you can do that you can go to a a different country put your server in a different country and do it legally and there's nothing they can do about it so that's what they want and it's so fucking easy to do that now yeah it's not like you have to physically fly with your fucking computer to, to geneva right right you know i mean it doesn't make sense now is this just a scare tactic maybe but guess what? It's working because I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here we are, December thirteenth, mm. and we and they still haven't given us a final decision on what our bill is going to cost us come January first. Yeah, 
Doesn't make any sense. Now, are you through Centova Hooligan? Yes. You are. Okay. Yeah. So you you're dealing with the same folks that we are. Yeah. And, and and you're right. I mean, they're procrastinating and putting this off and putting this off. I mean, is the agreement set or not? I mean, come on, let's get this on, man. I mean, he says we're supposed to know right. by the middle of the month. Well, yeah. we're there. Well, we're there. They, won't, they won't even release what company is the last holdout. They said all of them have made an agreement, and they've all increased a little bit, which happens every year. Right, That's right. understandable. There's always a little bit of increase. Sure. I mean, inflation. I'm fine with that. But there's that one last group that's not, I don't know if it's ASCAP. I don't know which which group it is. I, I heard it was BMI. BMI? BMI, which is the biggest one. That would make, that would make sense. I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other ones are, are smaller. BMI is like the fucking, uh, you know, serious satellite radio. They're the big one, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, that's just what everybody's saying. There's no, like you said, there's no buddy saying to us who it is, what it is, you know, what the rate increase may be. We're left in the dark on it. It's almost like, fuck you guys. I'm, you I'm at that point, to. too. Right. And, and I've already looked into other avenues myself, and there is ways to do it, you know. Um, but why? why I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the way it should be done, the way it's doing right now, there's nothing wrong with it. No, I it's mean, not broken. It's not broken, but we're going to have to fix it because they're going to break it for us. Right, right. Absolutely. And the thing of it is, is if they destroy this, will it ever build itself back up again? Yeah, some people will come back. I'm sure if four months down from now they decided to lower it and do everything, I would come back. But would you get all those internet radio stations back? No, you wouldn't. No, no, because no, they wouldn't even know. Uh, I mean, the sad part is, I mean, I know both of you guys well. And I know the one reason why we all did this radio station thing for the love of the music. Absolutely, right. absolutely. I, it, it there's wasn't no to demand. make money. It, it's no. not to make money. It's and everybody seems to think that it's a business. Okay, well, yeah, it's a business to stay on the air. Right. Um, yeah. You got to try and stay on the air. But we're not in this to make the money. We're in this for the music and for, uh, you know, God, look what I did, man. Look at my station. I got a right. gas station. Well, well, see, there's things that people don't realize either. And, and it's not just the licenses we pay for. You know, we have to pay for the the, 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 the tool to put the music on the radio. There, There's a server, a software that we have to use. We have to pay for that monthly. We have to pay for the website that we do, you know, yearly and monthly. Uh, it, and then if you want other things too, right, you got to do, um, if you want to do email marketing, you got to pay for that. I mean, there's, we pay more than we make. And that's almost every internet radio station. Yeah. And, and Guido, you, you've been there. You, you know yeah. what it's like being at an actual radio station. Right. You're forced to play whatever list or whatever. And, I've been in the same situation too. I've I've worked for the classic rock station. I've worked for a top forty station. Yeah. I've worked for a modern rock station and ESPN radio. I hated it. I you mean, because you don't get to express your love of the music that way. No, you no, you don't. In like like you 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 play like the rock classic rock station here in, in Buffalo. They they play the same seven or eight bands all fucking day long. Okay, yeah, and crazy. it and it does because. There's so much good music out there, like not even just classic rock. I know that's what we kind of kind of are, but we're kind of getting away from that a little bit. We we've been putting newer music in, you know, and it, it, it's so good. There's so much music out there, Hooligan. I mean, there's yeah. so much. There's so many song, good songs that you know that I don't know, and vice versa, you know. Okay. And that's why we started these stations to to let the people hear this shit. Some of this shit is twenty years old and it sounds brand new to me because I never heard it before. Oh, exactly. I mean, you guys, all these bands out there, and it, even like the new bands coming out now. There's so many more bands you could find due to the fact how technology is upgraded and how you have all these different websites. I mean, if you look at Bandcamp or if you look at even YouTube, you can find all these bands that you normally wouldn't find any other way. Right. Right. And, and that's the, the where the money's being lost to these fucking companies. Not from this internet radio station that's paying the money, these YouTube and these Google and all this shit where people are being found on their own. Mm-hmm. 
and, and, and doing their own record deals and doing the releasing their own music. That's where the industry is losing money. Not from us because we're actually playing music that's already published and we're paying for it. Yeah, we're, we're paying for this music. Whereas people are going to these other sites, they're downloading the music for free illegally. Right. And instead of cutting down on that and actually trying to make your money back because of the way things are, you're going about it the whole wrong way. I right. mean, a lot of this ha- might has to do with album sales. Album sales have decreased. It's harder to go platinum now than it was 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. definitely. It, you know what? It is so hard. And that's why this next thing I'm going to say, it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. But Adele, you know who Adele is, right? Yeah. She released her new album in the middle of November. It sold 5 million co- physical copies already. How the fuck do you do that in today's society? It's it's amazing. It's, you have to have that strong of a fan base that wants to support you. Right. She Whereas, sold 5 million in the United States, man. Yeah. Just the U.S. People don't do that no more. <laughs> no. No, I mean, it's... Adele? Admit- Adele? Yeah. Yes. Never heard of her. Oh, my God. She's got an amazing voice. She really does. She's I'm not... Fucking with you. I was going to say, she's not... Uh, <laughs> I was like, really? Yeah, I was going to say, you're an idiot or whatever. But, <laughs> but it's amazing, and I, and I give her so much kudos, and I'll tell you why. Because Justin Bieber was number one on all the charts until her album came out. She knocked him the fuck off everything. <laughs> it, it was yeah, a beautiful thing if you look at it that way. Well, you know, Justin Bieber, too, got to give him credit, too, because he still sells music, too. He's yeah. one of those those lucky few that... There's still a few that are selling physical music. But not many anymore, you know, and you have to be really popular. Like you said, you have to have a huge fucking fan base to sell a million copies now. Yeah, That's why I mean, he's always getting into trouble to get that. It doesn't matter. It, that sells. What, it, you, look at Ozzy. Ozzy fucking pissed on the Alamo and sold two million copies after that. Yeah. You know, I, he bit the head off a bat and sold another million. It, it, it's There's no bad, bad publicity, man. There isn't. That's no. why I'm hoping we get picked up by somebody one day. And say, "Oh, those fucking idiots said this." Yeah, yeah, bring it on, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> when they pick you up, you have to bring me on as a guest once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We, we, we were going to do it today, and I don't know if we're going to do it now because um, it's kind of late. But we were going to call like cities in California, like a store or something, and ask them stupid questions during the Christmas rush right now. <laughs> If I if, if I bought a toaster at the Walmart at the Kmart in in uh, um, bumfucked Egypt, can I bring it back to you? Right. Even if I right. don't have a receipt, you still carry the same toasters, don't you? Yeah, stuff like that. We shouldn't call them and just mess. Are you guys open? That's my best question. Is when is when I used to work at a store one time, and or and somebody would call in and say, "Are you still open?" No, I'm just fucking here answering the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were fucking calling, so I was going to say, hey. Are you I should old? probably spend an hour overtime just so I can answer your call. Talk yeah. to you a little bit. Yeah. I, I felt you needed someone to talk to. Are you open? I, but this would be the best time to call when they're busy like this. You, we would piss somebody the fuck off, man. <laughs> Maybe we should, man. Let's give it a try. Why don't you look up, a, look up a, an anonymous number on there for like a Walmart or... Uh, a, a retail call, store. I want to call it Taco Bell in California. A Taco Bell in California? Or a Del Taco. Yeah, what kind of Christmas specials you got? <laughs> <laughs> Please not be that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, do you have any specials? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, See, call a Chinese restaurant and ask them if they're open Christmas Day. Do you, do you serve deer? <laughs> And then, and when they answer, just ask them. Ask them. Yeah, I, I've got cats, man. Do you want to buy some cats? <laughs> All right. Do you sell pussy? <laughs> That's what you should call a pet store and ask them if they sell pussy. Oh, massage parlor. I got I got Del Taco in in uh, Fresno, Tur- Turlock or was it Visalia? <laughs> Which one we want to call? <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna get fined and, and all kinds of trouble because we want publicity. We might get into trouble for this. I don't know. You're the one calling from your house, so uh, I'm calling from Skype. Yeah, it's registered to you though. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's X 
actually registered to KGF Rocks, but that's okay. Oh, what a douchebag. See what I got to deal with? <laughs> that That's another thing is, is people don't get either, is not only f- folks can, do we have to pay for all this shit, but if we don't tag the music right, we can get a fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, a fine. It, it, yeah. Just because fine. the song didn't say Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, you know, <laughs> or Black Sabbath, uh, Wow, I couldn't think of any other Black Sabbath song. War Pigs. You know, if it says, like, yeah. War Pigs, track number six, you got to find. You can. It's potential, yeah. Right. Yeah, they don't catch it every time, but when they do, they raise hell. So, so Hooligan, now, have you... There was that band that you used to play all the time when you were on KGF, and I forgot. And I want to find them because I want to play them. The fucking train band or whatever it was. The, oh, so, um... Oh, why would you do this to me? Put me on the spot like this. Uh, I have to look at my collection here. Give me one second. Yeah, that Southern Rock Band, man. He's going through the collection. Uh, yeah, it's going to take me a minute. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Because I thought they were they were a good band, and I, I'd like to get them on. And uh, Steve Kyle. Steve, who the fuck is Steve Kyle? He's the uh, he's the uh, guitarist from. Um... Um, oh, what's it called? Damn it. Here, hang on. I'll pull it up. Where did you get Steve Kyle from? Hang on. Hang on. Big. Hang on. This is a quality show, folks. <laughs> yeah, bring me on and everything hits the fan. <laughs> no, we're fine, man. We're rocking and rolling. We always rock. Oh, Rebel Train. Rebel Train, he's right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have him on, on January 16th. I just set the date. Or what, Why didn't you tell me that? I've been trying to tell you that. You won't listen to me. We're having him on. On um, We're going to close the deal, and we should have him on January 17th. I've been talking to him for two weeks. That's my partner, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I've been talking to Steve Kyle. He's lead guitarist, man. Well, you don't have to look no more, Hogan. You're all okay. good. Okay. Yeah, they, they rock and roll, buddy. Hook. Yeah, so... It, <laughs> now, when any guest comes on our show, we always we always drop this bomb on them, too. Um, you know, we have this talk radio network, too, if you're ever interested in something like that. All right. You know, if you, you want to do... You know, you could still do your thing, whatever, because this is separate from the radio station. And uh, you could do a sports show if you want or whatever. And uh, it's always fun. You, you and uh, Mary Jane come on together if you want to. You know, oh, dear. But it, it, the door is open to you. We're trying to fill the, the schedule here um, because if we can't do things on the other one, why not try this one, you know? Yeah. I, I, I still get to talk. And make fun of uh, free ride on a weekly basis. There's nothing wrong with that. No, not a damn thing. And I give it back just as good as I get. And to rewind just yeah. a minute, the band was Shotgun Rebellion. Shotgun Rebellion. Shotgun Rebellion. That's. Oh yeah, you, you dumbass. Shotgun Rebellion. Yeah. Well, well, who's that band you're talking about? I knew they were. I said a train. I was so wrong. Well, the, song, the song I used to play was uh, Black Train or something by them. What, See, the I knew there was a train something. What's the name of the band? Shotgun Rebellion. That's it. Let's get them. Shotgun Rebellion. Oh, oh free ride. I forgot to tell you, Scott Weiland canceled the interview. Oh, well, yeah, I figured he would. <laughs> that, that's a shame. <laughs> I, I, Shotgun you, you know, Rebellion, huh? You know what's so bad about that, though, is I was watching some Stone Temple Pilots the other day. Did, have you noticed when, when, like, the first album, the videos for it, the dude was fat? Yeah. What the fuck happened to him? He was like a uh, like an anorexic chick by the time he died. He, he had, like, four distinct different body types and styles. That if you yeah. saw him, you wouldn't recognize him from the last time. That's crazy. We will, he, be, having, we will be having an interview with Shotgun Rebellion. Oh, we will. Yeah, because I've already got them liked on here, and oh, their let's... agent is Yvette. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yvette, Yvette Loveland. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll talk to her and see if we can get them on here. Oh, that okay. Would be nice. Yeah. But you're right. Cool. He did. He looked different from album to album. But it, it, you know, I'm all for you losing a little weight, like Meatloaf did and shit. But Scott Weiland wasn't like horribly fat. He was just chunky i guess i don't know he wasn't but, chunky anymore 
No, it was a shame that what happened. I always liked Stone Temple Pilots. I thought they were the only band from the grunge movement that was actually still rock. You yeah. Know, you know, maybe Alice in Chains, but, but I always thought that Stone Temple Pilots were mislabeled in that grunge era, you know? They were more like the later 90s bands, you know, like the, in my opinion, like the Litz and all that. But Well, the, diff- the difference between them was most of the grunge bands came from, you know, that Seattle area. And right. here you got a California band bringing their own interpretation of it. So, I mean, they had the California rock right, right. mixed with the grunge of that it era was, to become popular. Clean, so. It was clean grunge is what it was. It was clean yeah. grunge, really. It, 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 yeah, it wasn't really all about depression and sadness either, which was the grunge motto, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I, I tell you what, though, that first album they had kicked, I, it really kicked ass. Actually, I love every single Stone Temple Pilots album except for that la- that one last one or the number four they did uh the black album with the star on it which i thought yeah. was a cool record lay or uh, cover and shit but the the songs it almost sounded like they weren't ready to, to make an album at that point you know and then they were here not too long ago with chester Bennington from um limp biscuit or not limp biscuit, park lincoln park rather as their lead singer i can't do it man i can't do it yeah. i just can't I, I he's a good singer great singer probably oh, a better is. singer than scott wyler but he's not Scott Weiland. No, exactly. When, once you have a band that has that singer going on tour with another singer, it's just not worth it. No, it's not. And, and especially someone that you already know is a totally different singer. Okay. You already know from Linkin Park that he is not the same style singer as Scott Weiland. But Scott Weiland wasn't about singing. He was like Dave Lee Roth. He went to see the show. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he came out and yeah, like when I saw him the last time I saw him with uh, Stone Temple Pilots was the it was the Family Values tour and it was them and uh like uh Lincoln Park was on it and uh, uh Stained and a couple other bands. Primus was on that tour Prim- too. Yeah, 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 Primus. But Stone Temple Pilots stole the show, man. Stole the fucking show just the way he he stole the show. I couldn't name you another dude in Stone Temple Pilots if I. I mean, I probably could if I tried. Dean DeLeo and Chris or Kretz or whatever. Yeah. But who who gives a fuck about them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, who were they? You know, it's just like if Dave Grohl didn't become a Foo Fighter, everybody would say, "Who's the rest of Nirvana?" You know. <laughs> true. Very you true. know, and because how many people you know can name the bass player Nirvana? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, Curse Novo Selic, I think it is. <laughs> but but go. not but not many. So grunge to me, the only two bands that come out of grunge three bands, I'm sorry, three bands that ever mattered anything was Stone Temple Pilots, uh Soundgarden and um and um uh Pearl Jam in my opinion. Yeah, and I mean with uh Stone Temple Pilots and Soundgarden, it was based on the vocalist. I sure. mean Chris Cornell has a vocal range that's Nearly unmatched. Unmatched. With the, I mean, he, he. I went to see a songbook tour. Him and a guitar. How many? How many people from that era of rock could sell out show after show just him and a guitar? No, I don't think anybody else. No. Yeah, I don't think so. He's the voice, man. Anything he's been in has been great. Audio Slaves, Stone Temple, or uh, Soundgarden, uh, and anything. He, his solo, even the stuff he did with Timbaland when it was more poppy, yeah. still good to me. I mean, it's his voice, you're right. His voice, he's a rock star, man. He's a, he's permanently going to be famous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he's one of those people, the few that will be. And I, I, I don't think Kurt Cobain would have panned out to be the icon that he is now if he stayed alive. I mean, sadly, sadly, I would have to agree with you. The fact that he died early mm-hmm. made Nirvana bigger than it would have been. Mm-hmm. Definitely. He was like the martyr for grunge, you know. And there were so many better bands that come out of that, uh, that era than, you know. I think one of the most overlooked bands to come out of the grunge era at that time was Green Day. I know Green Day went on to be great. Mm-hmm. But during that early 90s time. Green Day was good then, but nobody gave them much shit because it was punk rock, you know? And, man, did they just blow the doors off everybody a couple years later, didn't they, you know? (laughs) Well, they they also had to deal with the whole fact that when they went from a punk rock route to going mainstream, Mm -hmm. they lost their fan base, so they had to rebuild from scratch. 
and they did well, man. Yeah. I, I mean, when they came out with American Idiot, nobody expected that. I mean, who expected to go to a Broadway musical? Or that too. And I always been a big fan of Green Day, and I even liked their their other stuff too when they went mainstream. I did like some of it, but now they're just putting out good tunes. That song Twenty One Guns," it's yeah. an amazing song, and, and it's just well written. They 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 matured. They're one of those bands that matured. You know. Yeah. Now, if you look back at those, those times. Look at the bands like Blink One Eight Two, who were huge, just like them, and all these other bands. Where are they now? Exactly, you you can't find them because they they fell off. Right, just gone. And, it, and, they didn't evolve like like a Green Day evolved. Right, and, and that's the key to it. Green Day realized it that shit, dude, we're not as big as we thought we were. We need to fix it, and they did. I mean, I don't know how Billy Joe became such a great songwriter overnight like because it was okay but after their little you know debacle where they were not selling records and they came out american idiot it was like dude he took that time off and really did something Mm -hmm. that that's probably one of the greatest rock operas ever i'll put it up there on a pedestal above tommy and i know a lot of the fucking solid hardcore uh rock opera fans would argue with me but i think it's better music the the, it was just well produced, mm-hmm. but lyrically, it was one of the strongest. Lyrically, yes, yes definitely and from the beginning to the end. It, it definitely didn't, it didn't miss. No, it did. It, and Free Ride even loves the songs off that album. I know um, Boulevard of Broken Dreams is Free Ride's favorite, uh, or is it See When September Ends? Free, you there? I think he left. Free, I think you lost your mic there, bud. That that is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> You put I, I think December is my favorite though from them. Oh, wait, we went to, yeah, that that's a great tune. When September comes, September, wait, it, yeah, September. Yeah, it is. Um, and he plays that song every time. Yeah, I, I I'll play it. I'll play it every once in a while. But I I, I really enjoy it, and um, it's one of those. They, they it kind of hits home, and the lyrics are just un, un, they're just uncanny, and I think it's one of the greatest songs ever written. Um, but, but that's what I was saying. Where did he learn how to write like that overnight? Well, I, I think he went into himself. Because he was writing just regular, you know, uh, three-chord ditties, you know, like. Yeah. And then he came with these complex songs that are like. I think he had help, though. Oh, I don't think he did. I think he grew up. I think that's he, yeah. he, he went from teen angst right. to, look, I see the world for what it is. This, uh, this is what I'm going to write about. This is my inner thoughts, and I'm putting it to music. Right. I think it was just a matter of mature, uh, maturization. Yeah, and, and I think and that you're song, right. that that song, "Wake Me Up When September Comes," is like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like um, his voice matches that melody so well. Well, that's what I like that, about Twenty One Guns. The same yeah, thing. The way his voice thing. fluctuates during the chorus, it matches the song. It's like his voice became an instrument in the song. Yeah. You know, yeah, it and really it blended is. so well. But, you know, they've had the same producer forever, So I, I, Rob Cavallo. So I think you're right, who, again, would say in that uh, he matured, you know, because a yeah. producer can only be as good as the songs that he's producing, you know. Exactly. And uh, did those songs just – in your they were more adult. See, that's what they did, though. They could recapture their old fans back, too, you know. Yeah. They didn't just get new fans, which they did, but they took those fans that abandoned them and brought them back, you know, and that's hard to do. That, that's – I give them credit. Kudos to the Green Day. <laughs> and if you get a chance, check out the the second album they put out of that when they did it with some of the cast of mm-hmm. the Broadway musical, and they also had a full orchestra with them. Oh, I'll have I'm, to check that out. I, I, I mean, I missed that one. It, it's it's – it adds a whole new level to that. And when you say it about how his voice matches, mm. when you hear it with a full orchestra accompaniment, right. it's blown away. Like It will it'll make the hair on your arm stand up. Well, which, I, which album is this? Uh, it's coming from the... They did a whole... Uh, a second album. Hold on. Let me, let it, me pull this one up, too. Yeah, I, I, I can't... I, I've seen it before. But the uh, first time I saw Green Day, or the only time I saw Green Day... It was I had to take my little brother to a concert. And I wasn't into the new music coming out. I was still holding on to the 80s metal and all that. But he, he couldn't go unless I went. And it was Green Day. And I was like, 
holy shit, these guys are really good. You know, I, I think sometimes you shut your se- own self down to accept something as good. Yeah, yeah I mean, new music is just um, a, a perception. I, I, I think a lot of people got a bad taste in their mouth from um, the 2000s, 2010 era, uh, the change of Metallica, and the bands that, that went commercialized too quickly. I think those bands ruined rock and roll. Well, well let's I think talk rock about, and roll is making a comeback, uh, to be honest. Well, you talk about Metallica. Th- th- that's a good point. You know, you put Metallica and Green Day on the same pedestal. And here, I'll tell you why. Metallica went mainstream, okay? They made all that money. Fans lashed out. So with St. Anger and the other one after that, they tried to go back to what they were. But Green Day didn't go back to what they were. They made what they were better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Metallica didn't do that. They just tried to go back to their old sound and failed miserably, in my opinion. I think the difference is Metallica worried too much about keeping their fans, where Green Day was just like, screw it. We're right. going to just evolve how we want to. If you want to come along for this journey, come along. And if you don't, and if you don't well, you know, it, screw you. Right. It, it, and you know what was amazing, too, for Green Day? And I'll give them credit to this. After American Idiot came out, the fucking album that came out after it kicked ass, too and sold well and they kept it going for a little bit they're they're waiting off now but you know what the one thing that american idiot did for them is they'll always be a concert band and they will always sell places up oh yeah always because of that, that one album they can go for the rest of their life without releasing another new album and sell out venues that's true they can and 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 kudos to them they did it you know, and so many bands lose it. Oh, because like you said, they want to keep their fan base. They want to stay on the charts. They want to do this. But I think when a band really does it for themselves, it always ends up being better music. Yeah. Always. And, and free to answer your question, the album I'm talking about is the original Broadway cast recording American Idiot featuring Green Day. So they, so they did it with the cast, Green Day, and an orchestra. I still haven't seen that. I want to see the actual musical. It see the problem is the original cast they had was so amazing, but now once it, it leaves Broadway and goes to the right. touring phase, right. they're they're adding in people and everything like that, and some of them just don't pull the weight of the original cast. Yeah, see here in Buffalo, we're lucky sometimes because we're so close to New York City that we do get some of the the Broadway ones. I yeah. went to see. Uh, um, what the hell's the Frankie Valley one? Um, yeah, Jersey Boys. Okay. And it had the original Frankie Valley in there. The guy I forgot his name, but the guy that did the actual Broadway run and the album and all of that was there. He was the guy in the movie too. Nice. So it, that's kind of cool where you get to see the and I and we also had the uh, Family Opera here with Michael Crawford doing the Phantom. Which okay. Was the, so so we get them sometimes because we're so close. But you're right. Once it goes farther out of the north, you're getting, yeah. you're getting the third fucking fourth, fifth, sixth guy that they picked for this, you know, and not the original. But it doesn't mean it's bad. You should, if, if no. people, you should go see a Broadway-style musical someday. If you've never seen one, go see one. You'll be pleasantly surprised, I think. I really do. I, I agree. And, I mean, if, if you think it's not for you, there's always – something you could find. I mean, look at Avenue Q. That hit a whole different audience. Yep. I thought it was hilarious, personally. Well, I, you know what's cool about it is I didn't get to go see it. My fucking mom did and didn't take me. I was pissed. She won two tickets to go see, in Toronto, Paul Stanley doing Family Opera. And she took my dad. I'm like, why would you take him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave me here. Well, Paul Stanley did Family Opera, and I know... um Sebastian Bach did some some Broadway too, and a lot of a lot of these people do it. Harry Connick does Broadway. A lot of uh, famous singers do Broadway shows, yeah. and it's not easy. Can you imagine doing that? They do sometimes two shows a day, and you got to get out there and sing and dance and whatever. That's not easy work, you know. Uh-huh. No. Uh, but I, I love it. I've, we get a lot of, uh, of musicals here. We had Rock of Ages here, and I missed it. I wish I would have went and seen it. Because I seen the movie, and I was quite disappointed with the movie. But from what I hear, the musical is so much better. Yeah, I didn't get to see Rock of Ages either, but 
I, I wish I did. And I can't even bring myself to watching the movie. No. Based on, no. <laughs> the movie's no. so cheeseball, man. You, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I got to bust in here. You're a fan of, of um, Broadway plays? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I've seen uh, several. Um, I, I don't know how many, but I've seen at least five or six, or maybe even more. And uh, I love them. So I've been. Do you do you rehearse the scripts and shit too? Sometimes. Oh, you do. Yeah, I actually was in uh, theater in high school, and we did musicals and all that. And I thought there was something gay-ish about. Yeah, it. you can't use that term anymore. It's we have to play. Gay-ish bullshit. Yeah. bullshit. No, we do. You yeah. said it. You no. said it. I want yeah. to take America back by storm. I want to be a son of a bitch. I want to tell people what I think. All the good guys are gone, man. John Wayne's gone. He used to tell it how it was. John Wayne's gone. Dean Martin used to tell it how it was. Frank Sinatra used to tell it how it was. They're all gone now. They no, the best one no to tell it like it was was Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Lastly, well, that's because he was a part of that gang. Yeah. Him and, him and Frankie were buddies, man. Yeah. And my favorite president, Bill Clinton. I did not have sex relations with that woman. You know, I think I think Bill Clinton was completely misunderstood. Uh, no, yeah. you know what? I, I hated Bill Clinton until until he, he lied. And they're like, why? Because every man would. No. You got busted. You got busted cheating. You're going to lie on your what? Stop. 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 My, my whole problem was is he got blown on my fucking carpet in the in the in my White House. So what? Go to a you fucking think he, hotel. You think you he's the bag. first go to the Hyatt. To a, go you think to he's the, the first president gate. to get a blowjob in the White House? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm sure, I'm just sure he John got F. Caught, Kennedy man. got blowjobs in the White House. Well, I, well, John F. Kennedy, he was a man whore too. Right. So uh, that's nothing to do with it. He got busted and he lied because he, just like the song by Shaggy says, it wasn't me. We didn't know. Yeah, the thing is, is we is, see how, how society has changed even in the 90s. Society changed even in the 90s. We all found out about this blowjob in the White House, which it wasn't just a blowjob. It was a lot more than a blowjob. I'll tell you that right now. But he got caught, okay? Well, we didn't find out that JFK was a man whore until 1989. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is the best thing that Bill Clinton said about the whole thing was that a blowjob is not sex. <laughs> I'm like, look, see, honey, so the, I, the president said. The president said it's not sex. <laughs> It depends on what the word what uh, what how you're using the word is. Is that what it was? It, no, because he said because he said he didn't have sex relations with that woman. And there, when the blowjob came out, he's like, they're like, well, you said you didn't have sex. She goes, he said, I didn't. I don't consider blowjob sex. Yeah. Yeah. And then as far as the cigar goes, he just needed a good humidor. <laughs> yeah, right. He didn't need to soften that bitch up a little bit, you know. But my yeah. favorite thing about the whole incident was is that the blue dress was at the Smithsonian for a while. With the cum stain on it. That's just sick. <laughs> Why the fuck would that be? I mean, really? That's that's a piece of American history. Is a blue dress with a cum stain on it. I yeah. mean, you gotta be like proud of yourself at that moment because there's there's millions of men and boys around the world that have cum rags that will never be in the Smithsonian. That's true. That, it depends on which way you're looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that poor yeah, that yeah. poor kid that's spanking his monkey right now, um, his you know his cum will be wasted. That that, cum, that sock's going to be in the garbage can, not the Smithsonian. That's the yeah. real tragedy here. And, and, and you know he he places it in there at the hope that his mother will find it, and that's that's just basically it. You're going right. to get caught and smacked around. You're going to you know that that that'll teach me to do something stupid, right? Well. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the old saying is that uh, if you do it, you'll go blind. Yeah. I, I would have needed fucking glasses a long ass time ago. Well, it, it... <laughs> I mean, a long time ago. A Just like I've time. always said, if God didn't want you to touch it, he would have made your arm shorter. That's right. <laughs> or your dick smaller. Right. You know, <laughs> there'd be a bunch of T Rexes running around. Yeah. Not being like that so. That's right. That's how you. I would can't be. reach not... it. I can't reach it. 
<laughs> that's why we would have to be completely dependent on women to help us out. Right. That would be a drag. You know what? You know what burns sometimes. Mm. All right. I know this is going on a record. But when you when you manscape and then you put aftershave on it afterwards. Oh yeah, that burns like a motherfucker. That's yeah. <laughs> I got bit. I, I used to. I used to uh, uh, do my man trim with uh, the electric, you know, kind of thing. And uh, one time, that's man, they, they caught. Oh, dude, it caught a hold of one of them hairs. Well, that's the last time I did one of that. Uh, you know, I didn't have to be trimmed no more. Fuck all that. If I tickle her nose, I'm doing. She's doing it right. If that's I what t- I figured. Wow. You know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know it, it, like how many times my, did you make pubes, me bitter? Yeah, if my yeah. pubes are tickling her nose, then by golly, she's doing it right. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess so, man. But anyways. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> wow. He, he makes me lose my train of thought every week, Tolkien. This is what he does. Yeah. Do you, I, do you know what his favorite kind of underwear for a woman to wear is? No. Everybody knows. Granny panties. Granny panties. Granny panties to me are the are the shit. That come on, really? Granny panties. No. So even, even so, you can't take shit. free ride to visit grandma in the nursing home because he'll. I'm be not talking about on grannies. Oh, I thought you meant depends. No, no. See, see, you're still polluting it. It's. So you're you're gonna like all right so it's all right all right all right back up so say say you met some hot chick she's 25 or 26 and she was okay. into you right. we we'll talk about we're we'll talking about Santa Claus we'll talk about this fantasy all right um and she just loved you and wanted to be with you and right. she was wearing sexy bikini brief underwear you would tell her to put these nasty granny panties on not nasty ones they'd be brand new and clean. Dude, they're fucking nasty. I don't care if they're fucking nasty. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would lay those out and say, I'd like you to wear these. Your fantasy would be over. No, not really. Not necessarily, because if she loved me, it would she'd be done. do what I ask. Because it fulfills my <laughs> fantasy. Isn't that what a loved one is all about, fulfilling your fantasies? Who said anything about a loved one? <laughs> right, exactly. We're well, talking about have to be a, a loved one. I mean, you know, if she was hot for me, she, she'd do what I asked her to do. Okay, so we, we're in a strip club. Let's, let's take this scenario. Okay. 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 We're, we're dude, in a strip club. Dude, if she's, she's getting $50, $60, $70 from me. She's yeah, getting my like entire it. fucking – She's. I'm breaking out the ATM card if she's wearing granny panties. So, wow. so okay, but let's let's take it this way. You okay. have a 10, a, a girl on a scale of 1 to 10 that's a 10, and uh-huh. she's wearing like, you know, a thong. And she's doing her dance thing over there. And then on the left-hand stage, you have like a seven wearing granny panties. You're going for the seven with the granny panties, or are you going with the ten with the bikini or the thong? Only if she's wearing a – only if she's wearing the granny panties uh, without a bra. She'd be So so she'd be a ten to you just because she had the granny panties. No, she'd probably be about a nine if she was like a – you know, know, that, that takes a lot of nerve. (laughs) <laughs> wow I, you know but uh yeah it's a turn on to me man i like it i don't like the, the i don't like the g string up the ass it doesn't you know oh, it's nice and all all right i can see your ass it's you know kind of sexy you know but it's just, it's just something about those those silk granny panties or the the um uh, oh i don't know how to describe it i, I don't know either <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I just the, don't the get the it. Cotton, the cotton granny panties, you know. <laughs> you know what? You, mean, you guys need to really think about having a psychologist on here just to screw with them during the show. We should. That would be great. That would be great. That would be awesome. Hey, you're, <laughs> oh, listening, to, you're listening to Conjugal Visits uh, on Spreaker through KGFrocks.com. I'm... I'm free to ride along with my uh, my good friend Guido, and our special guest tonight is Hool- Hooligan uh, from uh, Hooligan Radio, and you check him out. What's your, what's your website again, there, Hooligan? Uh, Royal, Royal Hooligan. Hooligan. Yeah, Guido got it. RoyalHooliganRadio.com. There you go, Royal Hooligan, and him and Mary Jane is over there. And who else you got over there right now? Uh, I got DJ B Man and DJ Mark. Uh, they're both from Belgium. Oh, oh cool. 
So I'm trying to do the whole get everybody involved here. So international. But, we we, yeah. we did that once in uh and another station we were all part of. <laughs> and <Yeah>. uh <laughs> we had Australians and we had uh Brits. Yeah, like Brits and yeah, and it was well I liked it. I, I actually thought it was kinda cool because especially like, you know, you heard what they their idea of good music was, you know. And and some of it parlayed into what we listened to but some of it was new and exciting you know like the the one australian dj we had played this person named jimmy barnes who i never heard of but apparently he's huge in like europe and australia and stuff and he was really good and you know i would have never knew about him if they weren't on so i I think that's a good idea is to have a, a global spin on your station you know we would like that but but we can't get them Nobody wants to talk to us. No, <laughs> Cause yeah, it's, probably because okay. of granny panties. Are like fuck that. Why would I want to work for a guy that wants to wear granny panties? He wants to wear them. You know that, right? I don't want to yeah. wear them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. don't want to wear them. All right, we are going to. Oh uh, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week we will not be on the air due to. Christmas festivities, uh, right. but we will be back s- December twenty seventh with Tommy Gibbons of Tantric. Will be on the program. He's a lead guitar player from Tantric. And the week after that, folks, we're gonna have Mike LaPond from Symphony X and Silent Assassins. So you don't want to fucking miss that. And then also, that's the uh, New Year's party. That's right. going to be on January third, and then on January tenth, the following Sunday, we'll have uh, Sean Hujanin is back on the show. Cool. Uh, and last time he was on, it was a great show. And he's gone through a lot lately, and we're going to talk about that and about his upcoming new studio visit that he's going to be doing. And I know he's doing a tour with Queensryche right now. Correct. That's pretty Correct. cool. And so then, so look at that, uh, uh, Hooligan. You are the guest, bef- like the, the, the guest, and now we're going to have these other guests on, but you, 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 you rank just among them in our see. opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored. Yeah, as yeah. as a tantric fan, I'm honored to be coming on the the show before. Yeah, and, and now so. he's their, he's their new lead guitarist. He yes. he just he just came in the band, and I saw some of his his uh, work, and he's a pretty damn good guitar player. I'm actually excited yeah. to interview him. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing about it is, is I don't know if you know who Michael Pond is, but if you're a metal fan, he's fucking huge. Yeah. You know, he, Symphony X, uh, Silent Assassins. Right. Uh, he's toured on Ozfest. He's sold millions of records. These are pretty awesome. And on the fine se- got here. On the seventeenth, this is just tentative. The seventeenth of December or January, uh, Steve Kyle from Rebel Train will be with us. Cool. So that'll be very cool. Yeah, yeah, and and you could, you could be our guest, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to call in and just say "fuck you" to free ride. That's fine. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, and do. Tell me I'm crazy about the granny panties. You know, yep. you want to talk about granny panties? That's you fine call in and talk to Hooligan right now. Yeah. All you got to do is go to the kgfrocks.com homepage, click on the conjugal visits, and hit the Skype button, and you'll call us. Well, fellas, I you know, uh, Hugenin is going to be on our show on January the 10th, like we just said. And I think what we're going to do here is we're going to take a little break here on the Conjugal Visit. Our okay. special guest is Hooligan, okay? And uh, we'll be right back, all right? And uh, just dig this. This is holding on. Sean Hugenin. Oh, wait. Yes. Yeah, that's who yeah, it is. That's it? it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's him. Ha uh-huh. Rock yeah. and roll. Conjugal Visit. Our very special guest is Hooligan from Royal Hooligan Radio on the net. So back to, you know, back to this thing, I was thinking just a minute ago, uh, back to this thing we were talking about earlier in the show about these royalties and shit. Now, we talked about this last week, uh, Guido, about, and we didn't really get into it, but tribute bands um, are now worried that they are going to lose the ability to be a tribute band because of being charged royalties by companies like uh, BMI or and uh, these other companies coming after them for royalties Mm -hmm. and um i went to see a concert over in um uh in st charles here by st louis and uh it was uh two tribute bands and it was an awesome show i mean it was really fantastic but they stand to lose quite a bit too yeah but see 
in a way, I understand it because they're not just doing that artist's songs. They got their stage set up. They got fucking, you know, um, their clothes that they wear. You know, they're doing identical shows that, that, that they're doing. So they're not just doing their music. They're doing them. Yeah. You know. Well, it's been yeah. going on for a long time. Remember the movie uh, Rockstar? Mm-hmm. They, those yeah. were tribute yeah. bands. They were. It, 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 back at the time, there wasn't a lot of them, I think. So there wasn't like a, a big thing that was kind of cool. Oh, we got a tribute band. We're, we're, we're good. But now, like, they're doing the stage props that these bands have. They're doing, you know, yeah, and, and in a lot of cases, they sound, they, they sound better than the original band. Why am I going to pay 150 bucks to go see Motley Crue when I can go see Shout at the Devil for eight? Right. And they put on the same show, you know? So they're worried about losing money. It's all about money. Yeah. Well, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it... I See, I haven't been with the like the rock club scene in a while. It's been, geez, sad thing, 16 years now since I did anything with it. But does isn't the venue required to actually pay... Royalty fees? They are. That's not what they're arguing. What they're, what they do play the royalty fees. And see, what the thing of it is, is in the bar industry, when you pay your ASCAP and BMI fee, you're paying the fee to have live entertainment in your building. You can't even play MTV on the fucking TV if you didn't pay it, okay? Yeah. But they're all getting a blanket amount, okay? It's just like every band that's in there gets a blanket amount from this. Okay. So. They're all getting the same money, so because there's no way for ASCAP to know that I had a bar, a band in my bar, and they played 34 different cover songs. You know, mm-hmm. there's no way they know that. But what these artists are saying is they're going into these venues and playing just their songs. Okay. So why why should everybody else get, share the wealth? Right. You know, gotcha. they're just playing our songs. They're not playing three sets of everybody's songs. You know, and that's where they're, and not only are are they feel like, and I, I'm just speaking like of from what I read, do they feel that they, they're they doing their music, but they're stealing their stage set up, they're stealing their, you know, costumes, this and that. They're basically doing the exact same thing. It's not becoming a tribute band anymore. It's becoming a carbon copy band. Yeah. You know, and they want to be paid for it. <laughs> but I don't think it's, I don't think it's the bands, um, uh, the, the actual artists that's the problem it's these companies that are out to gouge these guys i mean they're they're literally trying to and i don't know if it's for the money and i don't know if it's to silence them but you're right i mean why would i pay 150 bucks to go see the stones when this really kick-ass stones tribute band is here for 10 bucks and the guy probably sounds more like Mick Jagger than Mick Jagger does anymore yeah right right and that's the that's the point that that's where they're losing money see they're not going to lose money to to uh you know uh, hooligans rock band where hooligans playing you know tantric and he's going to play stone temple pilots he's going to play this and he's going to play that and he's going to play this they're lo- now he's going to do a tantric cover band and that's it tantric tribute band so now Everybody wants to go see their band because they might even sound better than Tantric in some cases. I've seen cover bands or tribute bands where the fucking band was better than the original band. Yeah. You, you know, and and, especially the bands that are getting up there in age where <laughs> the singer doesn't have the pipes that he used to have and he can't sing the, the notes that he used to sing. Right. And now someone younger doing the same thing is capitalizing and getting a bigger following because of it. So, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, somewhat. And I, and that's where they're. Um, they're worried about it. I, I saw some news today that uh, I was telling Freeride earlier that um, Daily Roth is going to do either a tour or a couple shows with uh, Steve Vai, Billy Sheen, and Greg Visanti, his original band he had after Van Halen. And they were going to do one-off gig last week in, in California in this bar, and they decided not to tell anybody. Well, the word got out, and the fire marshal had to shut the show down 10 minutes before they went on. There was too many people there. I, I think that's kind of exciting. I was a huge David Lee Roth, Edom and Smile fan. I, I, I thought Edom and Smile was better than anything Van Halen ever put out. Unfortunately, it was his last good album. But <laughs> I would love to go see that band. I don't know if that was your kind of thing, Hooligan, but uh, do you remember that album, Edom and Smile? I, I, do, I do remember that album, yes. Kick-ass album, in my opinion. Yeah. Best thing Roth ever did by far. I would love to see that come to here. More than Van Halen, I think. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, there's some good artists in that band. Speaking of fucking money, 
Bruce Springsteen tickets went on sale here on Friday, and 37 minutes later, it was completely sold out. So was it the show here in St. Louis? 27 minutes. That's crazy. I didn't even know that many people still like Bruce. Oh, he puts on a hell of a show. And not only that, it's that thing we've talked about before. It's I saw Bruce Springsteen. Right. You know, well, that's all there is to I, you, it. it. The cool part about it is is if you could tell me you saw Bruce Springsteen at, at fucking As- Asbury Park, New Jersey bar that he first played in. You know, that's the cool thing. Everybody yeah. can see Bruce Springsteen now. It, 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 it's not it, – you know what we become? We become a hipster society. Yeah. You know? yeah. We have. I mean, like I was always buying vinyl, okay, and I've always had a beard. Now all these young kids got beards and they're buying vinyl. Dude, you weren't even born when vinyl ended. You know, and 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 then all these hipster traits are coming. They want to see that. Oh, I saw Bruce Springsteen. I saw this. I saw that. No, you didn't even know who they were, dude. You just want to say you saw them. We right. need to end this hipster craze. <laughs> I know. I almost want to shave my beard off because of it. I mean, do I think the same thing? And and it's crazy because that's why I've I have always had tea. My... I'm not going to grow a full beard. Why not? Because I don't want to grow a full beard. Because you can't. You're not man enough. I see. I'm I'm trying to keep, like rock the Zach Wild beard right now. Now that would be that's cool. Zach Wild, it has an amazing beard, dude, and and he looks so fucking scruffy and dirty. He's a Viking. He is, man. <laughs> Sounds like he got the hots for him. Oh, I I would suck Zach Wild though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. As long as he played <laughs> with me, you know. Yeah. Waka, waka, waka. He's got the most distinctive style ever. I mean, I, you could put him in any fucking band, and I would say, "Hey, that's Zach Wilde playing the guitar." Yeah, he, he really does. And and it's like, you know, everybody says, "Oh, Randy Rhodes. Oh, oh, was the best guitar player." I'm I'm not knocking Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes is amazing. But to me, Zach Wilde sounded more like Ozzy should have, more Black Sabbath the type. You know what I'm saying? Randy I mean, Rose had a cleaner playing style. Absolutely. And there was he was more to... polished. Right, right. And he was good. He was great. The fucking first two albums were amazing. But what I'm saying is Zach, distortion and just kick your ass chords. You know exactly. I mean? and, and to me, it sounded – anything Black Label Society puts out, I own. Oh, if it's got, yeah. if it's got the name on there, I buy it because – He's, you know what he does? He does these little gems sometimes too. Like he'll have this heavy album, it's all fucking metal, and then there'll be Neil Young cover "Heart of Gold" on there. Yeah, and it's like awesome. It's like beautiful, <laughs> you know. And and the best album he ever did, "Pride and Glory." Man, I fucking love that album. Yeah, that, that was a great band that I wish still existed. Oh, when me he too, was with man. "Pride and Glory." Oh, fucking Machine that- Gun Man. Come that on. that whole album was great. Fucking toe on the line. Uh, my favorite one is "I Hate Your Guts." I hate your guts. Good song. Yeah. And I wish you were dead. I dig the hole myself, but I'd rather run you over in my truck instead. You know, I mean, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, it, he was more. I'm not saying he was the best Ozzy guitarist, but I think he was the best fit for Ozzy. And and the thing about it is, he's Ozzy's guitarist. He's yeah. been in there more than anybody else. And his co-writer. And his co-writer, too. Absolutely. You know, I always thought, like, when... I, I always was into Jakey e. Lee Ozzy. I always loved the Jakey e. Lee Ozzy because he was bluesy, Jakey e. Lee. Until uh, the first Zach album came out with him. Like, oh, my God, this guy kicks ass, you know? And then he looked like a little girl back then remember he had his fucking... blonde hair yeah, right, yeah. Off the, right, right off the california beach or something yeah yep. right and then and then he turned into this viking like, what the fuck happened with no liver yeah. no, <laughs> he liver. Really, he's, no liver he looks like he's on steroids yep yep he can't drink at all it'll kill him that's how much fucking booze this dude drank free ride he used to drink like what a bottle of jack at every show yeah and and, and he's really has liver failure and he's not that old. He's like in his 40s still, I think. Maybe he's, early. He's, he's like 48. He's, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. And and that's really young. You know how much fucking alcohol you had to consume from the time you were able to drink till you were 48 to have liver failure? 
<laughs> Think about that. That's a lot of fucking booze, man. Yeah, it's a whole lot of booze. He's got a radio show too. Yeah, he's got a sports. He has a radio sports show. one. Yeah, yeah, sports. Wild on sports. That's fucking crazy, Zach Wild. And here's the thing about it: he actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he really does. He's very knowledgeable on sports. Who would have thunk it, man? By looking at him. But you know what amazes me about him? Is he's that big and dude, and his arms aren't tatted. What the fuck? <laughs> that's, that's a good point. You know, he, he's not, he doesn't have tattoos. I don't think he, if he does, I, I don't remember. If he does, they're hidden. Yeah, because I never seen him like you know. Ozzy's got the some. Of the, you ever see some of Ozzy's tattoos? It looks like the fucking next door neighbor kid did it. Yeah, really. Yeah, pissed they look like prison. They look like prison tattoos. Yeah, they do, except for that one fucking dragon he's got on his shoulder. But you know what? He's Ozzy fucking Osborne. He don't need to fucking have cool tats. He's got cool. They're cool. They're Ozzy's tats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's the uh-huh. only guy in history that made money by just being an ass, like, really. By being himself, man. I mean, just fuck it. I don't care. I had a. I remember that the time. Remember it when he was drinking all the time, and Sharon hid his clothes so he couldn't go out drinking. So he fucking took one of her dresses and went out in the town drinking. Yeah, that's Ozzy, man. That's who I want is my grandpa or my dad. Hey, dad, get out that gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Put my rat down, dad. Put my rat down, right? <laughs> I mean, you think Ozzy's when he he went in and, and saw. Like his kids smoking pot or something, he probably said, "Oh, that's bad. Don't do that." Don't no. you think he's the one that gave it to him? Right, right. You know, I mean. And then you see Sharon; she's all prim and proper and high society, and and she's an evil bitch, though. Yeah. She yeah. is an evil bitch. That's why he's so rich is because she is the mastermind of Ozland. She yeah, can, I controls mean, it all. Man. She's the one that puts on Ozfest. It was her. It, Ozfest was her conception. That's true. Right. He just goes along for the ride. Whatever, Sharon. Do whatever. You know. Yeah. I, it was because didn't she try to get him on Lollapalooza or something like that, and they wouldn't let him on? Said, and she's like, screw yep. it. She's like, we'll do this. Yep. We'll do it better, and, and we'll stay around yeah. longer. And they did. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, they did. Well, Ozfest was even when Ozzy wasn't on the bill, kicked ass. You know, they always had the best metal bands of the time on. You know, I, I was just surprised that they didn't have any of the. And it's funny they snubbed the big four. Yeah, they always snubbed the big four. It's not like they asked them and they said no. They fucking never asked the big four. Nope, never. And it, good, good for them because in in Sharon's eyes, Ozzy's the big four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you argue against that? Ozzy's fucking heavy metal. Ozzy is the godfather of heavy metal. Black Sabbath had more to do with the heavy metal sound of today than any other band. <laughs> That's true. I, the problem is, they never sold out. No, they never sold out. You're right. And so that's that's why the whole the whole situation is, if you sold out and you went to the Big Four or whatever like that, I mean, Slayer, they never put out like a pop record-ish, like right. a Metallica did or, you know, Anthrax to put out some mm-hmm. mediocre albums that kind of reached a broader audience. Right. Black Sabbath stayed pretty much with, I mean, yeah, they have those rock ballads, but that was part of who they were always. Right. Even when they got deal, they didn't change. No. They got, they got actually heavier, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and then they put that piece of shit out with one of my favorite singers of all time, Born Again, with um, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple. What the fuck was that? That was the worst metal album of all time. And they'll even say it. Even even Gillen says it. It sucks. <laughs> because he's not a metal singer. He's a rock and roll singer. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was just different. It takes a different kind of person to be a metal singer. Look at look at Iron Maiden. Bruce Dickinson's not their first singer. No. You know, but they couldn't make it with Paul. They couldn't make it with him. Bruce Dickinson comes in, they're the biggest metal band in the world. Judas Priest, Rob Helford leaves. They got a good singer after Tim Ripper Owens, but what did they do? It's the voice, man. Yeah. It's the voice. That's exactly and right. And the thing is, most people, they never get to hear like how amazing some of these singers are. Because right. they'll just be like, okay, I'm turned off to it because I don't like the metal. 
Right. But when you actually hear one of these metal singers sing like a normal song, like for some kind of TV special or something, right? They have the best vocal range out of anybody. They do. Look at the dude from Slipknot, Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor. Corey he can, Taylor. he can do anything. Right. If you listen to him in just Slipknot, you may never like him. You know, but if you listen to him in his other projects, he's great <laughs> to, to a broader audience. I mean, you yeah. know, and, and you know, one of my favorite newer bands, I don't know if they're called metal, but it's the Adrenaline Mob, man. And uh, they're a great band. I, um, what's that drummer used to be in the band? Um, Mike Portnoy used to be in the Adrenaline Mob, I think. I can't remember, but they're a good newer metal band. And so is this, and, and this ain't a sh- shameless self promotion, but Mike LePon's new band. A Silent Assassins. If you haven't heard that yet, listen to it because it's amazing. It really kicks some ass. Metal music is the only thing going right now that has stood the test of fucking time. Really? Yeah. Look at you. Still got Iron Maiden touring, selling out. You still got Metallica touring, selling out. You still got Slayer and, and Megadeth and all these other bands still selling. The- Venues out, maybe not huge venues, but they're still selling out. Oh, oh no, they're How still selling out. The huge venues. They just right. sold out Yankee Stadium two years ago. There you go. How many of these rock bands from the eighties are still making it that big? None. None. Right. So metal fans are awesome. <laughs> Kick ass, dude. And we we've slowly started putting some metal. On. I know you do a lot of metal, don't you? Or you you do a lot of different stuff. Oh, I. A lot of different stuff, but yeah, I, I do like to have the Midnight Metal Mania, so. There you go, and that's cool. And we have our Monday Night uh, Metal Enema show. Um, right. And it's done by a bass player who's in a band called Conquest, who's signed by a national metal recording artist, Dark Star Records. He knows his metal, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's really cool. He's, he shocked me because, you know, oh, this bass player wants to come on, and he's got like this natural radio voice. It's like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, this dude's awesome. Yeah. But that's the thing about it is if you pigeonhole your radio station to one thing, you're going to fail. Oh, yeah. I agree. You know, and that's why we decided to put some metal in, to put some newer stuff in. You know, we want to keep everything with that classic vibe to keep it flowing, but we don't have to be pigeonholed because music should be loved by everybody. Yeah. And we I can mean, have they're... a good mix. I mean, you can still have a good mix. I, yeah. If you if, if you mix in some of the classics with with um, the newer rock today, it works. It definitely yeah. works as long as it's not the same shit all the time. No, I well, mean you don't need Nickelback or anything like that. You don't need no, that kind of crap. But no, there's no, bands. They're dead anyway. So I mean, no. I, don't, I don't even know. Are they touring yeah, did, at all? Did, Nickelback. Did you ever see his fucking house? Yeah, that's okay. He made his millions and he got out. Man, he's fucking, he ain't sad. <laughs> I saw them too back at, it was called Edge Fest. And I actually went to see them. It was when their first album came out, before the famous album came out. And it was them. It was Mighty Mighty Boz Tones. Um, oh, what's that band? Cut My Life Into Pieces. Oh, God. Um, Papa Roach, Papa Roach, Papa Roach. And, and some 41. Oh, and, and Goldfinger. That's a pretty good line. Yeah. 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 Not bad. yeah. And they were crowd surfing and shit. And this, this fat dude jumped on the crowd. The crowd fucking just parted, man. <laughs> Poor <laughs> fat. Straight on the ground. Like, oh my God, that's horrible. It was like he got up on the stage. They, he still went to stage dive and. That fucking sea parted, man. <laughs> I ain't catching that fat fuck. Uh uh-uh. uh. Hell no. You trying to kill us? What are you out of hey, your mind? Hey, hey, did you ever? I know you've probably been in situations, uh, hooligan, where you're at a concert and girls are crowd surfing. Did you ever yes. be the gentleman and crowd surf them, or did you cop a feel? Yeah, you accidentally cop a feel half the time when they're crowd surfing on you. That's true. True. I mean, yeah. when you have a girl going over, over the top of you. I mean, you want to make sure she doesn't fall. The right. best handle is her butt, right? That's true. I mean, it's a natural handle for crowd surfing. And that's, not only that, you get a better push if you push up. You know, you got her by the ass, and then and then your your hand pushes into her crotch. You can actually push her better towards the front, towards the stage. Yeah. You right. got leverage that way. That's yeah. what it's all about. No, you know, it's crowd surfing like is leverage. No, but it's one of those things. Like most of the time. 
most of the time I didn't intentionally do anything. I was when I'm at a concert, I'm there to enjoy the bands. Like right. half that stuff, I'm just like I, I've been in a mosh pit or two, but that's part of the experience. Sure, right. the crowd surfing thing I could do without. Yeah, I, I never got into that either. That that whole thing started in the fucking grunge era where they would jump off the stage and shit. And, yeah. And, and, and remember, they used to get higher and higher, go on the speakers and shit. Oh, and they, were, they were afraid Eddie Vedder was going to die. Right, He was right. up on the rafters. Yeah, right, right. And he would jump into the crowd, right. And that shit was just the gimmick that Eddie Vedder used to do, and then it turned into this thing. Now everybody's got to fucking do it. You yeah, know, and, and and you're right. I don't like it either. Well, I, I would like, but the fat kid jumping and everybody moving—that was fucking. That was fun. <laughs> the kid got up, and then everybody cheered him. But yeah. you know, it, it, it was just like it was. It reminds me of uh, what is that son-in-law? That movie son-in-law where that that oh, they go ahead, jump out there. You know when they're doing the uh, square oh, dancing. Yeah. And, you know, grab her jugs and nugs, and you know. It's some grindage, you know, and a guy jumps out into the audience. and We should get Pauly Shore on the show. He'd probably not do nothing. He would probably. He's not doing much of anything. He owns a comedy club. No, his mother owns a comedy club. Well, his mother, he manages it, I guess. I don't know if he's still doing it or not. She owns the comedy store, the biggest comedy club in in Uh, the I just happen. I know his public relation person, so I can put you in touch with him. That would oh, be awesome. Really? That would be awesome. Yeah. I'd love to have Pauly Shore I actually on. met him once. Well, I didn't meet him. I saw him. When I was in the military and I was in basic training, they were filming In the Army Now. His okay. Movie. I think that's what it was. Whatever it was. The yeah. one we was in the Army. And he filmed a part of it at our base. So we got to see him. He talked to us for like a few seconds. We, I mean, I didn't get to chat with him or whatever. But, you know, he said, hey, everybody, hey, how you doing? Whatever. He came through the mess hall once. So it was kind of yeah. cool. And it was at the height of his popularity. Yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he was pretty fucking funny. I mean, Encino Man is a classic cult movie. Mm-hmm. I, I think Encino Man really, I mean, the, just... The Pauly Shore character is is when he tried to become different, when he re, he tried to become the real Pauly Shore and, and stop with the grind edge and all this. And stuff. Yeah. It, it was like, no, no, no why, why aren't you doing that anymore? Why aren't you the weasel? You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like, what's his name? Um, oh, gosh, what was his it's name? It's like Chong now. They like can't... Latka. Right, and Cheech and Chong can't be anything but Cheech and Chong. That's true. They can't, you know, and well, that's I don't what know. you want. I, you Cheech know, you Aaron want to see did them pretty as good in, in Miami Vice. I mean, he was pretty good in Miami Vice. I think he, he was a decent, was a, uh, serious actor. But Tommy Chong in in that 70s he show? He was a natural. He was a natural. They, they did. I'm not saying they did. Okay, they did fine. But to go see them on a stand-up routine. Okay, Cheech Marin, live stand-up. What is he going to do? Right. You know, I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. It's it was like far- the classic Simpsons episode where they <laughs> try to separate the two of them with Homer replacing right. one. It just doesn't work out. The two of them together is what made them. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's right. <laughs> that's a classic episode, too. And it is. It's right. The two of them made each other, and it would be the same way. What the fuck were we even talking about now? I, I, I totally lost my train of thought. How did we get on this subject? <laughs> oh, we, we started with copying a feel in crowd surfing. Oh, yeah. yeah copying a feel in crowd <laughs> What the and, fuck? And, and then it leads to a conversation where we're completely lost, right? It's <laughs> not the best, best talks go. Yeah, it is. You know what? That's the thing, though, is you can have you – know, like the Howard Stern show. I, I, I like to model us after that, and I'll tell you why. Because Howard Stern doesn't fucking – program his show. He'll say, oh, this guy's going to come on, this guy's going to come on, whatever. He doesn't re- rewrite his questions and shit and, and, and the topics. They discuss. He might write down a little piece of paper, let's talk about this, this, or this, but it's all spontaneous. Like, they all give their oh, real yeah. point of view. That's oh, why that show is so It wouldn't be a decent so show if it wasn't spontaneous. I mean, I wouldn't enjoy the show, doing the show if most of it wasn't spontaneous. I mean, we have to keep to, when we do interviews of these rock stars... Or these mm. rock and rollers. Not to say you're not a rock star, man. I mean, <laughs> uh, but uh, when we get these guys on, I mean, there are some set questions, and but we don't like to ask those questions. Yeah, we, we like size questions. You know, we we like to say, oh, you know, we want to find out what he's feeling and what he's thinking, and, um, and we're not going to ask. Oh, okay, you're going on tour. What, what are you doing? How's this going? What's that? No, we're going to talk about what inspired you to do this. 
what was what was your idea? What were you thinking when this album came out? Uh, were you glad about the success, or or that one kind of tanked? Uh, you know, we want to bring out some of uh, what's inside. We don't want to talk about that just normal stuff. Oh, you're going in the studio far out, man. You know, we're not the typical radio station. So uh, we're really looking forward to this one uh, coming up on the 26th, or is it 27th? 27th. 27th, Right, yeah. right after Christmas. You guys got to tune in for that one. Uh, and Tommy Gibbons. And then also on the 3rd, again, I'll, I'll reiterate, uh, who's that, Guido? We're doing Mike LaPond. Mike like, LaPond of Silent Assassins and Symphony X. And Symphony X. And so we've got a lot of things going on here at the Conjugal Visits. Uh, I want to take a minute to thank uh, uh, Mr. Hooligan. Thank you, sir, for coming hey, on. Always and, a pleasure. And, and filling in tonight. Uh, Tats couldn't be with us tonight, so uh, you were gracious enough to come fill in. And thank you so much, man. I mean, uh, we really dig it. And uh, it was fun talking with you. We'll have to do this again sometime. Oh, definitely. I always enjoy uh, shooting the shit with you guys. Oh, it's All always right, a good man. time. Yeah, I like having you on board, man. That's awesome. And you can catch Hooligan over at Royal Hooligan Radio and all of his great DJs over there. And like I said, well, we're not ashamed. You know, we're not ashamed. Uh, uh, our friend Hooligan did it right. And uh, we're really proud of him, and he did a great job. And it's a good station. So if you get a chance, you like a good mix, go on over to Royal Hooligan radio.com just come back though yeah but come back to KTF Rock too because you know we love you too so we gotta have you so anyways I don't know I, we're, we're out of the norm here you know we don't we don't play that now you want to check out our shows on KGFRocks.com Monday night is the Metal Anima with uh, Rob Boyer kick ass show as always um, Mr. Uh, Wild Bill Hill is on Tuesdays and he's also on Fridays and Saturday. And then we have, of course, um, uh, uh, Zookeeper Bob. And Bob will be on, uh, I think he's on, what is he on, Tuesday, uh, uh, Thursday? Tuesdays and, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesdays and Saturdays. So he's on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So we've got some a, a decent lineup for you. It's all good rock and roll, and we enjoy bringing it to you all week long. And don't forget the special Conjugal Visit show coming up next week we won't be here okay we're gonna skip next week so you know you can tune in if you want to listen to some of the old shows but uh, uh we're not gonna be here and also oh good news we're gonna be mixing in some of our shows into our rotation okay some of our interviews and we're gonna be taking snippets of our interviews and playing them on our station which is gonna be really cool i think i think that's a great idea you might be on there hooligan so watch listen for yourself all right, I'll be. Hey, I do tune in to you guys too, even though I'm running my own station. Sometimes, you know, I, yeah. I put you guys on, especially at the gym. You know, that's cool. Oh, Throw that's something cool. on, get get it different. I like to support all those who supported me, and you know, we got to do everything together, especially with all the stuff coming up. Absolutely, yeah. there's there's enough people out there for us all to be in, you know, the same room instead of different rooms. Definitely, you know, and uh, we're we're fine with it, you know. And what you play is different from what we play, so it, it opens up the variety. Yeah, we we're we're a fan of all music, and uh, uh, we, we we both support local music where we live. And um, you know, check us out, man. Keep us going. All right, back us up. All right. So if we have to. You know, back us up, man. We could always use the help, and uh, just let us know if we can do more for you at the radio station and get with us. Boy, time is just dragging on here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to end the show, and it's kind of tough, man. Well, you know uh, what? We can, I, I can, I can end it for you. Okay. You Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we still got a couple of minutes. You want to eat well, up then, a couple of minutes, or, or? Yeah, we we haven't ended a show early, so let let's just finish it. And let's talk about, uh, yeah. Now, see, when you have to talk about something, see what happens? You just go fucking stupid. Stretch, stretch, stretch. It's stupid, stupid. Hey, like let's it. talk about football real quick, real quick. My Kansas City Chiefs beat the uh, 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 San Diego uh, Chargers, and also the Cincinnati Bengals lost to the Steelers today. How'd the Bills do? Next question. Bills lost by three to yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. They did. 
and it's a disappointing thing because I wanted LaShawn McCoy to kick ass against Philadelphia. I really to be, honest, to be honest with you, I'm a Philadelphia uh, Eagles fan. I wanted uh, to see the same thing. I mean, he, he, he got fucked in Philadelphia. He really did. And uh, I'm glad we have him. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm really glad it happened that way. But he was he was hurt. He, he got they hurt they hurt him by fucking just shooing him off. Yeah. No word to him. Like he thought he was the shoe in. And I think it's funny that the guy they brought in to replace him isn't doing so hot. Yeah, it was a mistake. It was it, it was a mistake. Chip Kelly has ruined the Philadelphia Eagles franchise. And the fact of the matter is, not only is he getting himself fired. He's getting the next coach to come to Philadelphia fired as well because the rebuilding process for how he destroyed that team is going right. to take years. Well, I remember when they made the trade, I said Kiko Alonso for fucking LaShawn McCoy. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I said Kiko Alonso was good in Buffalo. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but he's not LaShawn McCoy. <laughs> Chip Kelly is so uh-huh. narrow-minded. He only likes people that played it from Oregon and that division in college football, right. and he can't see beyond that. And it was just crazy. And you're right; he's going to lose his job next year. Look, he, he he chased off Deshaun Jackson, Lashawn McCoy, Jeremy Macklin. Mm-hmm. We have we have Sam Bradford as our quarterback. I mean, he destroyed a whole franchise and killed. And a whole all city. those guys that you just mentioned are doing awesome on other teams. Yeah, I mean, all of them. Every Deshaun team. Jackson would be doing better if it wasn't for the injury. But when he does play, he's right, right. top notch. Right. All right, and we're talking, well, you know, we, we talked about sports. Uh, 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 <laughs> ah, ah, I got you started late on the sports, but we're out of time. So, Smithy, we filled your gap. I want to thank <laughs> everybody for tuning in tonight. Thank you so much. And, um, hey, tune in more. Tell your friends about us here at the Conjugal Visit. And, again, uh, we've beaten this one to death. We're out of here. This is Free Ride saying bye. See ya. See you later. It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFRocks.com.